hello everyone. My name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good evening, good evening. This is DTM Real Talk, and we're just keeping it real. I have a very special guest today, and her name is Charlotte. Say hi to the good folks out there, Charlotte. How you doing? Very good. And uh, we're excited. If y'all heard Bryant last week, um, it was an advice from uh, a former drug addict, and he gave some powerful advice. And um, y'all go back and check it out. And I know you like it. If it's your first time subscribing, please like, share, and subscribe. Get the channel out to all your family and friends. Something might be said that can help somebody or even help you. So Charlotte, tell the good folks where you're from. I'm from New Orleans. Okay. I'm New Orleans area. So you're basically, you're from New Orleans. Yes. And you have children. I have two children. I have a daughter and I have a son. Uh, my first child, his name is Steven. He's eight. And my daughter, she's seven. Her name is Belinda. Oh, okay. Oh, I have a very good friend named Belinda. Wait till she hear your clip. Yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, y'all, I'm excited to have Charlotte on uh, this evening because she was referred to me by Pastor Mike. So he's so excited that you're going to come on and share your story. And I was excited too. So um, tell the good folks. So you were born and raised in New Orleans uh, with Two parent home, one parent home. How did that? How did that um, so my my struggle started young. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm from New Orleans, but I've been raised all over. Um, I start off young. My dad, uh, my dad was always in prison, okay. you know. And then um, up until about nine years old, I you know I lived with my mom and her mom, okay. um, and then my mom passed away. Um, right. And then yeah, after that it was just um. Uh, revolving door, you know, moving different places, different things, different people. Um, so when your mom passed away, where, where did you go? Um, so, uh, so my dad was in prison for drugs. He was a drug addict. And my mom, my mom was a drug addict. Um, she wound up uh, losing her life to doing drugs, so, which left me with my grandmother. And she was a drug addict. Um, once we, you know, once my mom died, my grandma just like, she lost her daughter, her other daughter and her husband, all that, all that same year to addiction. And then she wound up with me, my brother and my sister. Um, after that, she really lost herself. So then we would move from pillar to post, you know, right. um, I've lived, um, up North in Ohio. I've lived in Tennessee. I've lived in Arkansas, wow. um, all over Louisiana, uh -huh. Um, you know, and then, you know, um, God, my testimony is so deep, you know, because I didn't, I wasn't raised by my grandma my whole life, neither, you know, she wound up going to prison for, um, addiction and, you know, you live with your grandmother and then yes. she ended up going to prison, right? Yes. Her and my grandfather, both, both yeah. of them. Oh, bless your heart. So where yes. did you come from there? You and your siblings. <laughs> Uh, so after, after my grandma went to prison, my grandma's sister, um, I wound up moving to Ohio, um, Johnstown, Johnstown, Ohio. Um, I stood up there for probably a couple of months. Um, and like at that age, I had a lot of anger and animosity. Sure. I didn't understand. I didn't know. And then, um, you know, I started getting molested, you know, so I was in a real dark place. Right after my mom died, uh, my grandma got us and, um, she wound up getting in trouble and going to prison, which left my aunt from Ohio to come get me and my siblings. Okay. And um, when we moved up there, you know, an uncle, he wasn't my biological uncle. He was yes. married into the family. Um, you know, he started molesting me as a little girl. 
Wow. And, you know, I just fired out of control. I was angry. I used to put my hands on everybody. You know, I thought violence was, you know, my release. Um, yes. You know, uh, it got so bad to where she couldn't handle me. She put me and my siblings on a Greyhound bus and sent us back here. How old were um, you? I was 10, 10, 11. Okay. Yeah. So she put you and your sibling, you were and my siblings, yeah, on a bus. On a Greyhound of... bus. Yes, indeed. Okay, so did you ever get a chance to tell her about the uncle? Did she know? Um, she knew about it. I wound up mentioning it to her. Um, you know, but it wasn't really a concern, you know. Um it yeah. Um, so I just got more angry, you know. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So when you got back to New Orleans, who did she send you to? I wind up with uh, my cousins and their grandma and grandpa. Um, I really wasn't, they didn't even know I was coming. She just like put us on a Greyhound bus to, you know, she really wasn't concerned of where we was going. Uh, so I wind up uh, by my cousins, you know, and her and their grandma, their grandpa was fine with it, but her, their grandma wasn't, you know, so basically I was like in and out, sneaking through windows and, you know, trying to survive, right. um, you know. Um, were, your siblings, grandma, were your siblings with you at that time, too? Um, my little sister, yes, my brother. My brother was probably like 15 at the time. Okay. Um, by that time, he thought he was grown, you know, right. he was, right. you know. Okay. running the streets and stuff like that yeah so now you're about 10 or 11 12 years old i'm 11 11 12 at that time yeah so my grandma wound up, wound up getting out of prison uh-huh and uh she had gave her life to christ um she come home you know she tried to get us all back in order you know because at the time we wasn't in school you know we didn't know you know we they, my cousin's family, they couldn't register in school or nothing. They didn't have none of our documentation. You know, mm -hmm. my brother was in the streets, you know, and they, it just, it wasn't their responsibility, you know. So my grandma come home, um, she wound up getting us and uh, we wound up moving back in with her. And um, at that time she was a diabetic and uh, she was suffering with uh, hepatitis C, you know, her, her liver and that was shutting down. Um, you know, so then I had to deal with the fact of taking care of her because her house was so poor, you wow. know. Um, so she had so gotten a life life. She, she wasn't on drugs anymore, and now she has anymore. a debilitating disease. Okay. Um, so then it was basically me being a responsible parent and taking care of her this time, you know. And uh, it's really where my healing started, you know. Mm -hmm. So when my grandma got sober, you know, when I was younger, I was so angry, you uh -huh. know, she was so mean. My mom was so mean, you know, they were just like, well, our discipline in my house was, you don't, uh, I, uh, why, nothing. Like they would get something and beat the crap out of you with it, you know. Uh -huh. um, and at that time, my grandma, I've never experience her to have feelings you know um, open conversation hey this is what I want you to know mm -hmm. but you know with the Lord softening her heart you know she started telling me stories of like my mom and my dad and things that I didn't know mm -hmm. you know um, about, I had their life, seen, about their life yeah like I had seen certain situations when I was younger mm -hmm. but I didn't know the context I didn't know what happened or why it took place or you know, the circumstances, you know, and she started telling me things, you know, and then my heart started to get tender because it was like this woman, you know, she lost her 22 year old daughter. My mama was 28 and her husband all back to back to back three months apart mm. from addiction, you know, and she, and then she took on three kids. So my grandma come on, I was probably like 13 you know, she put me back in school. I started going to school, but then it got to where I, half the time I couldn't go to school because I was taking care of her. Right. You know, her sugar went level out because her liver was shutting down. She couldn't get a liver transplant because she's a diabetic. They didn't know if her body would accept it or reject it. You know, so um, then I finally, I dropped out. I had to. Okay. Um, you know, and then at what she age, might have, at what age did you I was, I was 15. Oh, 15. Um, okay. 15. Um, I dropped out. Uh, and at that time, uh, it was like 
right around Katrina. Okay. Um, yeah, it was around Katrina. And um, I wound up with my dad's sister. My grandma had, um, she had went in, with her family or whatever. She was really sick. So I wound up going with my dad's, my aunt. I wound up going with my aunt, my dad's sister, and, and my grandma on my dad's side. And we left, we left Louisiana. And um, we went to Texas. Um, Doing Katrina? Yeah, that's my daughter. I'm sorry. Okay, um, okay. So um, I wound up going to Texas. Hey, when, pretty uh, girl. <laughs> oh, look at them. Hey. Oh, that's Miss Marion. How Belinda. are you? And what's your she name? Said, How are you? Belinda. Belinda. And you Belinda. are? Me, Marie. <laughs> Marie. Why, thank you for the introduction. I'm Miss Marion. Now, are y'all going to let your mama finish with this interview? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's okay. That's only good. two of them. That's a good thing. They seem really happy. They're good kids. They're a handful too, though. Of course. So I wound up moving um, to Texas with my dad's sister and my grandma, and then my younger sister. My brother stood. You know, he was he was grown basically in his mind. Yeah. Um, uh, my nanny, Lord Jesus, my grandma was so old on my dad's side. Like she was. She was there, but she was so addicted to being on a computer with Pogo and playing Texas Hold'em and that, like, she would be there, but she wasn't there, uh -huh. you know, and my, my godmother, my dad's sister, she wound up taking off, you know, and going to Dallas. She was a drug addict, too, wow. you know. Uh, during Katrina, we was going from hotel to hotel, you know, right. and my grandma used to have to go bang on the doors, like, trying to find her, because she was off in the hotels um, doing crack cocaine and that, you know. So by that time, my dad had came home from prison okay. and uh, he got in touch with me and I'm like, I'm like, dad, like, where are you going? He's like, well, you know, I'm about to get married. Mind you, like in between with my grandma and my aunt, we used to go visit my dad in, in prison. I've been to multiple extra security prison satellite camps and not to see my dad. Um my dad came home and I hopped on a bus and uh -huh. I came back to New Orleans. Okay. When I got here it wasn't what I expected. You know, uh he got married and he went on with his wife, you know. He didn't um, try to reconnect with you. No, like he did, but he was he was in survival mode, you know, and I didn't really realize that then it was like he come home, he was lost. Every time he's ever come home, he came home to my mom, you know. Uh oh, and now uh, my mom is gone. Yeah, I got you. Now my mom's gone, so it's like it's a whole different situation for him, you know. And that's when uh I started uh losing control. Um, I started taking prescriptions, Xanax. Um, this is when wafers came out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, somas. I started smoking more weed. Um, uh, I got introduced to crack cocaine. Um, you know, I was just not, you know, um, yeah. hustling, you know, just out of control. I was really out of control, you mm -hmm. know, robbing and stealing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let me um, ask you, Charlotte, you've been there a lot. Um, I, yeah. So your dad, when your dad comes home um, and he doesn't really connect or pay attention to you because he's lost, his wife is gone. And so yeah. that girl wanted to be reconnected with your dad, not knowing how, lost your grandmother from one thing to the other. And so now you're spiraling into drug addictions and all yeah. that. Am I correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you were in New Orleans at this time, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm just kind of clarify for the good folks out there. Go on. So, um. So now I'm in New Orleans. Um, my dad, you know, uh, he wanted. I think it's booty. He moved to booty with his his um his wife. Um, you know, I'm in, I'm just in heavy addiction. Well, it come like a few months later. 
because of Katrina, that's when everybody started getting FEMA campers, you right. know. So right. my dad and his wife had got two of them. He's like, Shaw, you know, come stay in one, you know, because I used to be in the streets, you know, and he's like, you need to like slow down, you know, come chill out. So I moved into one. So mind you, I didn't like, I haven't been by my dad in so long, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the next time I seen him, he pulls up in a, in a Honda and he's like, get in. And I'm like, all right. Well, he had stole a Honda. It was a stolen vehicle, you know. <laughs> and I look over and he's like, here, you know, and he's the one that gave me my first pistol, you know. So I was like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> You know, so that was the first, you know, you know, even though I've been in the streets and, you know, I've been around some things, but uh, my but dad was a pistol now, right? My dad, my dad, I love my dad. My dad was my best friend. You know, that's uh -huh. why it broke me when, when he came home. Like, you know, it really, it really broke me. You know, that's why I got into addiction. That's when I really started spiraling, you know, and then when I seen him again, I was like, you know, we just got together. I felt like, Mm -hmm. But then I started noticing stuff like him and his wife at the time, they used to go doctor shopping. They used to go to the doctors and get rid of all these prescriptions and like. Wait, wait, Charlotte. That's a new, that's a new word for me. Doctor shopping. <laughs> doctor shopping. They used to hit different doctors in different cities and states, you okay. know, and get all these prescriptions for like Xanax and Somas and Lortabs and wafers. And that's when the DEA came in and shut down all these doctors because it was so much going on Whoa. in the States with prescriptions and, you know, people and dying. That's what they do sell them. Did they sell them or did they take them? Or no, what? they was, they, they used to, my dad would, all right. So what they would do was they would take them. They would take them and then they would get so loaded. They'd be, you know, because when you're an addict, you do stupid stuff. You don't trust people. People want to steal from each other. You know, they want to hide stuff. So given, you know, my dad, his wife, she loves Soma. Somas. They're a muscle relaxer. Right. You know, so she would eat them and she'd be like, um, she, like she couldn't, she couldn't like, oh my God, like she couldn't. They be stable like she would we call it the soma shuffle you know the way you got the shakes uh -huh. you know and my dad would be taking a xanax and you know and the wafers which is dangerous it's a barbiturate with you know an opiate you know that's it could kill you you know and i would sit there and I, at the time like 16 i would be sitting there and like she would be so loaded, like she couldn't get up. And then my dad would be hiding stuff all over the trailer. He would put pills here and money here. And like, this is the and environment. This is the environment that you had to grow up in. Yes. And I'm sitting there smoking a blunt. I'm like, and I'm dying. I'm like, oh my God. Like, you know, and that's the first time my dad looked at me. He said, you know, it scares me because you're just like me. Wow. And I was like, you know, and it just it I mean it didn't stop there, you know. Like so two when days later. That, when he said you're just like me, what do you what do you remember went through your mind when he said that? Were um you, I got mad. I got mad. My feelings was hurt, you know, because the way I looked at it, you know, even like with my kids now, and you know, when I was in addiction, I didn't leave them for nothing. I, I you know, I was I guess that's the reason why, you know. Uh, experiencing and going through what I went through, you know, but like um, with my dad, that wasn't, <laughs> you know, like two days later. You weren't the first daughter, thing in his mind. You weren't the first no, thing in his mind. No, you know. So let's talk about this. So you, you're in and out of the addiction and dad's going his way. And, and where is he now? Uh, my dad has died. Uh, he died. He, he died, died from an overdose. I was 19. Wow. How old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm, I'm 23. No, I'm 33. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm 33. I'm 33. sorry. 33. Like, sorry about your father. So at what yeah. point did you realize you needed help? Would oh, you my goodness. It's All right. So after my dad died, um, well, right before my dad died, I had I dropped out of school and I went and signed in at a technical college. Um, 
I wanted to get either so much credits or my GED. I was going to go and join the Navy. I wanted to do like, I didn't have no kids. I didn't have no family. You know, I didn't have nothing to do. You know, I figured what's better than traveling the world, you know, and going on secret missions. You know, that's what I wanted to do, <laughs> you know. And um, I, I was at, um, I went to Louisiana Technical College. Well, I graduated with a degree in carpentry. I, um, I didn't finish getting my GED, but I want to get my college credits to go to enlist in the Navy. Um, and uh, I graduated at McAllister Auditorium at Tulane. And uh, like two days later, uh, my dad passed away. They found him in a hotel uptown. Uh, he was getting loaded with somebody and they left him there. Wow. Um, after that, like it, I broke, you know, my little sister called me and she's like, Charlotte, you know, dad passed away. And that's what really broke me. You know, my little sister, you know, all her life, I've tried everything in my power to protect her. You know, in certain situations, I would take the fall. You know, I would, you know, I would guard her. I would protect her, you know, and for her to call me, it just broke me. It broke my heart. It was like I, I wasn't protecting her no more, you know. And that's when I was like, you know what? I want to know what's so special about this drug for you to kill yourself and then leave your kids, you know. So I wound up trying heroin for the first time. Mm. And to be honest with after you. Your dad, after your dad passed. Yeah, after my dad. Uh, after that, I was like, really? You know, so uh, I tried it once and now I didn't use it again. Uh, so that's when I met my kid's dad. Okay. Um, I wound up dating him for like a year. And then he wasn't, he wound up falling into addiction. Um, at the time, he liked cocaine. Uh, so before we got started, we used to make runs. We used to travel out of state to go and buy a quantity and come back and distribute. Like we used to sell. Uh, like every other weekend, we would take a road trip to Houston and then come back. Mm -hmm. And then he started dabbling here and there, here and there. He would um he would do some coke and then he would flash out and you know at the time I hated it. I'm like why would you do something like that that'll make you think people's in trees and looking out of windows like hallucinating <laughs> yeah like why would you want to do that you know and then I finally just I'm like all right let me try it um and then I, I didn't like it at all I thought I was gonna have a heart attack um, wait now this was then, it wasn't the heroin this was no, oh, this is cocaine. This is cocaine. Um, okay. Yeah. So he wound up. Uh, so my my whole family are drug addicts and convicts. You know, they're all users. You know, or used to be users. Um, so then he hooks up with uh, my uncle. Um, they start shooting dope. I didn't know it at the time. He was doing heroin. He wound up ODing, and then he comes. He lived next door to my aunt. He comes, and I had to go over there and. Um, resuscitate him you know and i'm like why hey, would you hey, do you that? had to go resuscitate your yeah he wound up od and they, they're like i had to go over there and hit him with a salt water shot to get him to come back well, yeah well, um so then i'm like that's when i just started um matter of fact we started working out here in gentilly is right this is after katrina it's probably like 2018 you know uh, gentilly was still you know nothing in the east right. Right. You know, and uh, me and him, we started working at a chop shop. A friend of ours used to own a chop shop down the road. Okay, and, not uh, What's a chop shop? <laughs> a chop shop is when you, uh, when a gentleman they they steal people's cars. So you put oh, in a water. Tell me something. <laughs> so when they would, um, they would, like a partner of mine, a few of them, they owned tow trucks. Okay. And what they would do, some of them was legit, and some of them if they had somebody to come say, "Hey, look, I need this part for my car." Uh -huh. They would go out, upload that same car, bring it to the yard. They would lift it on a forklift. We would drain the gas tank, cut the Cadillac converter off. Uh, Wait, take the <laughs> Wait, I'm old. Okay, I, all right, listen. Yeah, you worked at a chop shop. In a yeah, chop shop. so. Is what their dad like so literally um honestly their dad is the one that did the mechanic work 
Okay. I was the one they had dog. We had pit bulls all in the yard. Okay. So I used to take care of the dogs while their dad took like would strip cars. He would take the cars, lift them, strip, get whatever off of it that they wanted. This is we a legitimate, a legitimate um, um what is it? Cohen place? No. It's like all right, so the guy being that I knew, his tow truck was legit. Okay. Uh, he worked for an, uh, a towing company, but it had nothing to do with what we was doing. It was a garage way okay. in the middle of nowhere that nobody knew, and it was so totally not legit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, wait, hey, so wait, stop right there. I know the good folks want to hear the rest of this story, because I want to yeah. hear the rest of this story. <laughs> yeah. The shot um, is actually an amazing young lady, but we got to hear how she got there from working in this chop shop, right? <laughs> <laughs> come to where she is now so with yeah. that said this is dtm real talk and we're just doing what we gonna see y'all next week keeping it real we'll see y'all next week DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe while you're there.